The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. Uh, my guest today is Eduardo Espinosa. You guys have seen him here before. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for being here. No problem. I, I mean, it's it's convenient. You're the producer, so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but actually, I, I thought that uh, the topics we we did the Spanish one on. Uh, yeah, on, on the guy with his the, dinosaur uh, yeah. rider figurines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was awesome. And um, so I kind of wanted to keep it on a kind of mm-hmm. on a history. And I think this is something that a lot of people in the U.S. market might not be aware of. And I mm-hmm. think people even in the Mexican uh, market might not be aware of. But I came across it kind of by accident. Um, I was visiting Mexico City uh, back in September. Mm-hmm. And I happened to go into this little, um, uh, I'm going to say it's a church. Uh or uh, it was kind of a church, or it wasn't really a church. It was like, uh, like a temple or something. It was like a, a really nice house. Okay, but it had a fountain in this house, and I went there to look at this fountain that was made with all these seashells and stuff like that. And it's in San Angel. Okay, right. And it happened to be the anniversary of the day that um, the guys, and you know, you you saw the title bar. It's we're going to be talking about St. Patrick's Battalion, mm-hmm. right? Happened to be the day that they were sentenced to death or they were, quit, oh, okay. right? And so what happened is that I started, uh, there was a tour guide there talking about it and, it and it piqued my interest because I hadn't heard about this. And then I started to kind of question it. And then I said, this will be a great episode. And we're going to do this episode in Spanish eventually because this is kind of, it depends on which side of the border you read the history on. Mm-hmm. As to how they paint this. Oh wow! Okay. Two sides to a two story. Two sides to huh? a story. Huh? Wow. What's this? What's this innovation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but this is talking about St. Patrick's Battalion. What it is is um, the U.S. Mexican War. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, some of the articles that talked about the U.S. Mexican War didn't call it a war. No. Uh, they they called it like the like the corrective action. <laughs> <laughs> you yep. know, like, like, <laughs> you know, uh, they were going to correct. Uh, like, hey, s- yeah. stay. <laughs> stay, yeah. Well, it's the Mexican-American War, and for people that don't know um, a little bit about this, and this this is where I had the epiphany, and then I started researching it, and it, it, it turns out I was, I was right. It was exactly what I thought it was. But this, and we'll talk about it some more, this kind of opened my eyes to a whole different situation. But... To make it, you know, to explain a little bit about what's happening, the U, the U.S. forces mm-hmm. are coming and expanding westward. Okay. And it's a big deal to expand westward. Uh, President Polk at the time wanted the westward expansion. Um, Texas had declared its independence and mm-hmm. was its own country. 1839. Uh, something, yeah. Yeah, 1839. 1836 was the Alamo. By 1839, yep. Texas was an independent country and um they were also trying to annex themselves to the u.s at that time right and now if you talk to a texan they'll say we weren't trying they wanted us you know that kind of thing (laughs) but that's you know to kind of set the context of what's happening right right and so now you have all these troops moving south Mm -hmm. towards mexico uh at the same time you have texas rangers um fighting off bandits yeah Right, and if you and if you listen to it from the U.S. perspective, they were fighting off bandits and 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 the hostile Native Americans. Yeah, right. Yeah, they were hostile because <laughs> you were in their land. Because you were on their land. That that's one. <laughs> you know, that's 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 true. And and I and there was a lot of there was a lot of this going on, but there was also something that that I've known for a long time is that that uh, in the U.S. especially in Texas especially as a Texan. Uh, we glorify the te- the Texas Rangers, and right. and the the truth is that they were committing a lot of atrocities. Yeah, a lot. They were they were <laughs> actually they were actually um, 
uh, hanging people, lynching people, killing people, innocent people. Mm-hmm. So it, you it, never saw that. You never saw Chuck Norris's Walker doing that. <laughs> yeah, he was just <laughs> kicking everybody. You know? Yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, because it was, it was also like around the time where the whole uh, gold rush was going on, and California was damaging yeah. itself, and it was it was just <clears throat> like it was everything was all over the place in the yeah. 1830s. And I'm gonna tell you that that it, that that it was like. Um, I mean, you you have to understand that there was a lot of a lot of people coming across, stealing cattle, right, and also killing people, mm-hmm. uh, robbing people, and and then the punishment didn't necessarily fit the crime. They were going back and they were just decimating, yeah, uh, villages and stuff. I mean, th- th- you're talking about two groups, uh, the American side and the Mexican side, that were just committing all kinds of atrocities, mm-hmm. and in addition to that, uh, all of the Comanches, which the Comanches were. Very, very, very aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if the Comanches uh, happened upon your farm, they'd kill the women, they'd kill the men, and they'd kill any children, unless the children was uh, unless the child was about eight years old, mm-hmm. and then they'd take the child with them because they would integrate them into the tribe, and they figured that's how we get our numbers back for all the people that die in right. war. And one of the very one of the most famous. Um, cases of that is Quana Parker. Mm-hmm. His mom was abducted by the Comanches, and he became like one of the most feared Comanche warriors. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was all happening at the same time. Well, they get to the south, and um, let me find the. I, I don't want to mess up his name. Yes, John Riley. Okay, right. Happens to be part of the U.S. military. And there wasn't a declaration of war yet. That's very important to understand. Mm -hmm. But John Riley is an Irishman who fought for the crown, Mm -hmm. and he was an expert at artillery. Okay. He decides, uh, I'm going to go fight with Mexico. All right. Right? And he he crosses the Rio Grande, (laughs) and he approaches the Mexicans and says, I want to fight with you guys. Okay. Right. Now, when you look at it now from the Mexican's perspective, it was because America had slaves, mm-hmm. because they hated Irish people, Irish immigrants. It was a huge yeah. Irish migration due to the potato fam- to, to the famine. Yeah, to the famine. The potato famine was later. No, but you know, <laughs> uh, but to all the yeah, famine. There was, yeah, there, were, uh, there were a lot of uh, Scots and Irish and Germans, yeah. and there was yeah. there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of European. Mm -hmm. Uh, migration at that time, Riley decides, I'm going to jump ship and I'm going to go to Mexico. Okay. And then he takes about a few guys with him. And before you know it, they've got about 200 of these Irishmen uh, (laughs) fighting for the Mexican side. All right. Now, the Mexican side said, cool, (laughs) come fight with us, you know, and actually designated him like a colonel. Cool. Right in the Mexican, and then mm-hmm. um, other races started jumping on board. Uh, you had uh, guys that were slaves. Mm-hmm. We talked. We had an episode about how the slaves migrated to the south because yep. slavery had been outlawed in Mexico already. Mm-hmm. So they they went to fight for the yeah, Mexican the, side. I mean, that was around the time like they were still trying to figure out whether Kansas or not was going to be. Uh-huh. Uh, was going to abolish slavery. I don't, I don't remember it, but it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, it's it's there like, was, what, 20 or 30 years before the Civil War starts? Yeah, well, the Civil War, I think the Civil War was like a few years right after this, the Mexican-American oh, okay. War. Cool. Um, but there's... But that's the story that's being sold on the Mexican side, mm-hmm. that these guys were being mistreated by their officers. They were, they were being... Uh, they, excuse me, their, their working conditions were terrible. So they 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 decided to abandon yeah. the the American army and and go and jump ship mm-hmm. and be part of the Mexican army. Yeah, what's the other side of the story? Well, this is the epiphany that I had, mm-hmm. right? I'm sitting here and I'm going like, why would Irish guys go fight for Mexico? And it dawned on me, they're Catholic. Okay, that makes sense. Right? And I yeah. said, well, of course. That makes perfect <laughs> sense. Yeah. And and I said, and then I started, and, and I, I started looking, I go like, this was not about anything but reli- this was a religious thing. Right. They get there, they find out, you know, um, of course, Mexico is Catholic due to Spanish rule. And I don't even think it's Mexico at that time still, right? It's it's uh, New Spain or is it Mexico? No, it was already after it was, the independence. It was, it was already yeah. after the independence. So, yeah. but it 
it still was considered a, I mean, it's still considered a Catholic country. Yeah. Right. It's mostly Catholic. It's mostly Catholic. So he jumped ship and then all the Irish guys jumped ship with him. Mm-hmm. And then some of the German guys jumped ship with him. And it's mostly because they were Catholic. And some of the research that I did found out that uh, actually said that that was the ma- one of the main reasons that they did it was because they were not going to fight against their own religion. Right. Right. And that all of the, all of the officers on the U.S. side mo- were mostly Protestant. Okay, yeah. And, and a lot of the stuff that the, that's painted in the Mexican history is that they were being mistreated. Well, it's true, but it was more like bullying. Right. They're being bullied constantly. It was like, yeah. it was like their version <laughs> of cyberbullying. <laughs> you know? But he ends up leaving, and, and then that force eventually grows to be something like 700. Okay. Right. And these guys, and, and something about John Riley is that uh, he trained West Point cadets in artillery. So this guy was a pretty badass mm-hmm. artillery guy. Okay. And that's exactly what that battalion did. They were in charge of, of, of all the heavy guns. And their very first battle was in Monterrey. And they, cool. set, up, they set up in the cathedral and they kept, they kept pushing back American forces. And <clears throat> the, uh, the American forces had to... Uh, send in waves mm-hmm. and they finally would retreat and they were involved in a bunch of the big battles in Mexico like Churubusco uh, yeah, which was and then they're just called St. Patrick's Battalion because they're Irish because they're Irish and because that was their saint they actually had a flag that was a green silk flag okay. and it had the it had the harp and it had it had on one side, long live Mexico. And mm-hmm. then on the other side, it had St. Patrick, a uh, version of St. Patrick. And he's got okay. a staff down on a, on a snake. Cool. Right. And then underneath it says Aaron Gobra, which is mm-hmm. like uh, Ireland forever. Yep. Right. And, but the, these guys were so revered by the, by Santa Ana that he then commissioned them as an official battalion of the Mexican military. Okay. And and That's crazy, yeah. And so they're fighting all the way back towards mm-hmm. Mexico City, and it's at Churubusco where they end up losing. And they end up losing because they ran out of ammo. Oh, so it's not even because they <laughs> it's were not even yeah, because they were over. No, they just ran out of. They ran out of ammo. And that sucks. <laughs> it sucks. And it was pretty interesting that um, the Mexican army tried to surrender, mm-hmm. and these guys shot the guys holding the white flag. Oh, okay. To, to keep them from surrendering. Yeah. And and it was because they really believed that Mexico could be a better place mm-hmm. for them than the U.S. And they, they wanted Mexico to win. So they fought fiercely. Mm-hmm. Well, they get caught. They get arrested. And they get, they get sent to trial. Now, this is where it gets a little bit um, complicated. And we're getting short on time here. But there's so much to talk about this. But the, the biggest epiphany that I had was why, Mex- why Texas became independent. Texas became independent because it was mostly Protestant at that time. Okay. So it didn't want to, and, and Mexico had very strict rules when it came to Catholicism yeah, in Texas. Yeah, religion and everything. Okay. You weren't allowed to get married without a priest. Hmm. You weren't allowed to do certain things. So that's where I, I believe, and this is my personal belief, that's what sparked Texas independence. It wasn't so much they're stealing our cattle, mm-hmm. they're invading our lands, because they technically came and invaded Texas. Yeah. But a lot of the, the settlers that were coming were Methodist, and they were, they were coming, and, mm-hmm. and they had this Protestant. So figuring out that the Irish jumped ship because they were Catholic helped me realize that yeah, it makes sense. That Texas, Texas independence. Like, oh, yeah, we're also. <laughs> we're not going to follow the Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah, we're also going to align to our, our own religious beliefs. Our own religious beliefs. Yeah. So these guys get caught. And Wilfred Scott, who is uh, uh, the general mm-hmm. for um, the U.S. forces, uh, sentences them to death. But this is where it gets a little, a little weird. Um, if you had jumped ship mm-hmm. before an official declaration of war, you, you weren't sentenced to death. Right, because right. there was no war there. Was there was no war, yeah. so you were, technically yeah. you, you're not you, a traitor. Exactly, yeah. You can't be accused of treason you're, if there's no war You're going still on. a deserter. Right. Because you were enlisted in the regular yeah. army, but you're not a traitor. Yeah, it's like, you're a jerk, but we can't kill you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and then they in and, and the rules of war and engagement, they were supposed to kill these guys in a firing squad. And to make a point, they decided to hang them all. Okay. And they decided to do it at Chapultepec when they raised the American flag 
right. the castle. That's when they mm -hmm. let all these guys hang. They hung like 70 of these guys. Wow. Right? And they had a bunch of them as prisoners. Mm -hmm. And the guys that, that like um, uh, uh, John O'Reilly, which well, John Riley, but it's John O'Reilly, um, those guys that had jumped ship before there was a declaration of war, they got lashed, mm -hmm. whipped, and then branded. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so that was the St. Patrick's Battalion. Yeah. Now, in Mexico, they're There's heroes. Your lucky charm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what the brand is. I, I wanted to find out more about it, but they, they branded them mm -hmm. and they whipped them uh, publicly and all that kind of stuff to, to make an example out of them. But uh, Me Mexico um, started creating propaganda, mm -hmm. uh, offering uh, anybody that would want to come fight uh, land. Mm -hmm. and better pay than than their pay in the army and uh santana was said had we had 200 more of these guys yeah we, we, we would have won yeah. you know and um that's pretty much it i mean there's so much to cover and we don't mm -hmm. have that much time but uh it's a very interesting topic saint patrick's battalion i happen to be there they're revered in mexico okay and, and even the irish embassy uh, acknowledges them in Ireland for their patriotism here in Mexico. Yeah, I, they're, it's weird because we <laughs> we've talked before, like you know, within our circle of friends, about how uh, when you see like World Cup or the Olympics or any international event, yeah, the Irish and the Mexicans get along really well. They're the same guys. <laughs> I used to have a joke about that because yeah. for a long time I thought my dad was Irish, and it turns out not where we were English or from okay. my dad's side of the family. But I thought for a long time that we, had, my dad's side of the family, had come from Ireland. Mm -hmm. and I thought, eh, it's the same. We like yeah. beer. <laughs> we like fighting. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and. Uh, um, now, did you pick this because I have a leprechaun beard right now? Yeah, that's why I picked it. Okay. No, no, I actually, <laughs> I actually thought this was a very uh, Mexico celebrates St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, and it's a big celebration. Yeah, in we Mexico. do. Yeah. And you guys don't celebrate Cinco de Mayo, which is weird because no, why? because Cause, yeah, it's, cause, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. irrelevant, really. I mean, but to us, uh, Cinco de Mayo is yeah. the Mexican St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, but in, no, in the it's, U.S. No, you know? it's not. It's just a day. It's not even a holiday here. I know. Like we don't even take a day off. Yeah, I think it's just an excuse to... To, to get do, fucked up. Yeah, to get drunk, <laughs> just like St. Patrick's Day is yeah. for us in, in the U.S. It's a drinking holiday It's a drinking US. holiday. But I thought this was a very, very interesting topic. That's yeah, a pretty cool story. And um, for all my friends that are listening to this in the U.S., um, these guys are traitors. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> but to all my friends listening to Mexico... That's yeah. why you got to like guys like Canelo Alvarez. You don't know. You don't know. Actually, a lot of them stayed... Yeah, uh, in Mexico, and uh, even John Riley stayed and taught artillery oh, cool. in, for the Mexican military. And then eventually, they said that you know after lesson his, one: never run out of ammo. <laughs> <you> never, <laughs> <laughs> so he said that uh, the, one of the articles I actually got a lot of this from the Smithsonian article that talked oh, about nice. it, and I said a lot of the a lot of the the articles that were written about him because he was a hero, he was a national hero in Mexico. This just kind of petered out over okay. time. And nobody knows where he ended up and all that kind of stuff. And it said a lot of the guys actually went back to Ireland. Okay. Because after they hung some and whipped others, they decreed that whoever was left could just be let go. Okay. So they, they set free the other however many hundreds were part of that battalion. But Mexico had an official Irish battalion, the St. Patrick's cool. Battalion. And that wraps us up for this episode of the Shit Podcast. Thank you for joining me. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, where can people find you on social media? I'm everywhere as uh, Ningun Eduardo, N I N G U N, and then my name, That's right. Eduardo. And of course, you can find us on uh, pl uh, podcast platforms as Sta Cagado Podcast, uh, and or you can find us on YouTube as Tu Amigo Sam, and you can find me personally as Tu Amigo Sam. And that wraps us up. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll catch you on the next one. Laters.